Welcome back to Fiberless Creations. I'm Ron Farber Newman, and today we're going to take a look at improving the Noble Bandsaw Reindeer. If you're a follower of Matthias Wendell, you may be familiar with the video he put out many, many years ago where he made, in his own words, a cheesy looking reindeer on the bandsaw. While I love the idea of creating a complicated looking Christmas decoration in just a few steps, I'm a little hard pressed to say, hey, that looks like a reindeer. To me, it's always kind of looked like the Grinch had a pet llama instead of a dog and just made do on its way down to Whoville. So, after being inspired by some friends' holiday decor, I set out to make an updated, modern bandsaw reindeer that looked a little bit more like a reindeer, at least to me. And I'm happy to report, they came out just as I'd hoped. As someone who really loves Christmas, if I contribute just one thing to the woodworking and maker community in my lifetime, I'd like it to be this. At least if I have a choice. That's why I'm making the template for these bandsaw reindeer available for free on my website. I'd love to see other people make these too, so if you like it, have at it. But first, let's hop on in to see how these are made, starting with the inspiration and template development. In 2019, henceforth known as the before times, our good friends Hank and Spencer had us and some other friends over for a holiday party, and they had these gorgeous modern metallic reindeer sculptures on top of their media console. I loved how they looked and found out that they had gotten them from Cran Barrel. Closely inspecting the vertical line symmetry of the front face of the sculpture, you know, like a normal person does, it dawned on me that I could likely recreate it out of wood using the same technique as the Matias bandsaw reindeer, that is, if I could somehow discern its front and side profiles accurately. Getting Hank and Spencer's permission to temporarily dismantle their mantle, I placed the reindeer on the floor and proceeded to take multiple photos of both the front and side to use in said experiment. Full of holiday cheer from our little get-together, I took those photos to my vector drawing weapon of choice, Adobe Illustrator, and placed the photos on their own locked layer. I started with the side profile, breaking the final shape up into two separate parts, the body and the antlers. Tracing the body was super easy, though I did deviate from the profile in the photo in a few places, such as around the ears, to make my profile a little more geometrically pleasing. For the antlers, I decided it would be easier to draw them as overlapping and intersecting strokes rather than shapes, as that allowed me to tweak and nudge the points to more authentically represent the antler profile. After these strokes were drawn, I converted them to outlines and performed a Pathfinder merge command to make them one solid object. To create the smooth swoops and blends between the various tips of the antler, I used Illustrator's corner radius tool to pull the sharp inside corners out to match the underlying reference photo. After both antlers and body were created, I could combine them into a single shape, again using the Pathfinder and corner radius tools. For the front profile and its aforementioned vertical line symmetry, I decided to draw just one half of it with the plan to take advantage of its symmetrical nature once done. My first attempt at mirroring wasn't perfect, as the bottom vertex stuck out a little far, but once I fixed that and tried again, it was a perfect match. The two halves didn't quite make up the width of my reference photo, however, so I stretched it a bit in the horizontal direction to make the combined profile wider. Once that was done, I could touch up a few places where there were seams from the mirroring, such as at the top of the head between the two antlers. After tracing both the front and side profiles, I made sure both vector shapes were exactly the same height, then created a few horizontal guides to make sure that the features of the reindeer lined up between the two sides, such as at the reindeer's belly and the tips of the ears. Since I had used my phone's camera to take the reference photo, and we don't live in a perfectly orthogonal world, there was a little bit of perspective baked into the photos that caused these features to not line up straight away between the two drawings. I decided that the side profile would be the best source of truth, so I nudged the points on the front profile into place by selecting groups of nearby points and moving them to where they needed to be in order to fall at the same place on the horizontal guide. Now, it really didn't take long to make the template from the photos, but I wouldn't know if it created a truly successful 3D solid until it was cut out. But there was a way I could test the template out without wasting wood, and that involved extruding my template shapes in a 3D drawing program. I mentioned in a previous video or two how I really want to learn Autodesk Fusion 360, as I'm still super clunky in there, but I figured it would be up for the task if I could only figure out how to do what I was trying to do, and that was how to take extrusions of each profile, one in the X dimension and one in the Y dimension, and then do a Boolean operation to only show the areas where the two shapes intersected, the exact same operation you effectively perform on the bandsaw. It took me a bit, but I figured out how to do that, and I was delighted to realize that my profiles would indeed create a viable shape on the bandsaw once cut out of wood. As a quick aside, after designing this template last year, I did try to actually make one too, but I chose an all too crappy piece of scrap wood to try it out on, and let's just say, it didn't go well. There was a knot in his front leg that caused him to fall and break an antler. It was too close to Christmas to try again last year, so I tabled the idea until this year. It's 2020, what could go wrong? So, I printed my template in two sizes for the two different pieces of wood that I wanted to use. A piece of hard maple laminated from strips and a piece of solid walnut. 
I honestly think the maple might have been a gym floor at one point. I find cool pieces in the scrap pile at the makerspace from time to time and figure I'll find a project for them eventually. This one only took three years. I cut the template out with my utility knife, then used a basic kids glue stick to adhere them to the wood for cutting. You can use wood glue if you really want to here, but these glue sticks dry way quicker and handle the job just fine. I headed over to the bandsaw to start cutting out the maple arranger first, when I realized I would have to cut it down a bit in the tail to nose dimension. This piece of scrap was wider than the 6 inch resaw height of my bandsaw, so I trimmed the wood to closer hug the bounds of the reindeer shape on the table saw until it fit the height of my bandsaw. With that little detail fixed, I could begin actually cutting it out. I bought this bandsaw a year or so ago off Craigslist, but haven't really had a chance to use it up until now since I've been working on my garage conversions this whole time, but boy does it cut like a dream. Cutting the front face first, I carefully followed my line all around the reindeer, reserving the two side pieces that I cut off. Back over on my workbench, with my hot glue gun heated up, I glued the cutoff pieces back in place, trying to place the glue in the areas that would eventually be scrap. You may notice a glaring error that I made here that I won't notice until later. We'll touch on it, but do you see it? <laughs> I wish I had. As a quick note, the reason we need to glue the cutoff pieces back on is to provide a flat face to use on the bandsaw table while cutting the other face of our template out. Not to mention that one of the pieces has the other piece of our paper template glued on. So, after they were glued back on, I could cut the other face. This dimension is definitely easier to cut, as the blade isn't going through nearly as much wood at once, giving you the ability to move a little faster and turn a little easier. I again hugged my line as smoothly and cleanly as possible, and in any areas that were too tight to turn cleanly, I did many relief cuts to make room for the blade to change directions. After the side shape of the reindeer was entirely cut, I headed back to my workbench to reveal the reindeer locked inside my piece of wood, only to find my error from earlier. Turns out I forgot to cut out the gap between the two pairs of legs in the front facing dimension, meaning that my reindeer had two giant legs instead of four. I had been throwing my scrap away as I went, so I had to dig through the trash for the cutoff pieces and put it mostly back together in order to take it back to the bandsaw to remedy this slight oversight. But once I had, it was smooth sailing. A little bit of my hot glue had gone in areas that it shouldn't, so I did have to use my utility knife to pry the pieces apart to find my completed reindeer inside. This first one came out a little rough, as it was my first time using a bandsaw in months, so I was a little out of practice. The smaller one though, the one made out of walnut, went a lot smoother on the bandsaw. I didn't forget to cut anything, the hot glue was where it was supposed to be, and I had a lot smoother and cleaner cut lines from the bandsaw blade. All of which gave a much more satisfying reveal at the bandsaw, without the suspense or anticipation. One quick note too, in my original version of the template that I'm using here, I added these slight details to the front profile to give contours to the head and neckline, but these ended up looking like accidental defects in the final reindeer, and I ultimately sanded them out, so I'll be removing them from the template that I have available for download. So with both reindeer cut out, I could focus on cleaning them up and sanding them. I used a bunch of sanding and carving bits in my Dremel to tidy up the lines within the grooves of the antlers, but for the body as a whole, I realized it was going to involve a lot of hand sanding if I wanted these to be super smooth. So I progressed through the sanding grits, going as low as 60 grit to clean up all the bandsaw lines, progressing up to 400 to get a super smooth finish. Getting into some of the areas, such as between the legs, was too difficult by hand, so I wrapped sandpaper around a dowel to create a makeshift manual spindle sander. I also glued a piece of sandpaper to a thin strip of wood, making what was effectively an emery board or nail file, to really fine tune the areas that were too tight to get to by hand. You definitely don't need to focus on making these perfectly smooth, and leaving a trace of the bandsaw lines to make them more rustic is certainly acceptable, it just depends on the aesthetic you're going for. All in all, I probably spent about 15 minutes cutting each ranger out, and then probably over an hour sanding each one. But hey, it makes a good excuse to catch up on podcasts and audiobooks. Once they were all sanded and smoothed, I used my air compressor to blow away the fine dust and a bit of mineral spirits on a rag to get any I might have missed. After that, I decided to use Varathane Spray-On Oil-Based Polyurethane and Satin Finish to give the reindeer a rich, warm look, which I figure goes well with the holidays. I briefly considered using a wipe-on poly, but with all the nooks and crannies on these, I decided that it would take far too much work and patience I just don't have. For the initial coat, I set each reindeer on a scrap piece of plywood that I could rotate on my bench as I sprayed my finish on each side. It didn't occur to me on the initial coat, but on subsequent coats I began by holding the reindeer in hand as I applied finish to its belly and antlers, both areas that were a little hard to reach when he was standing on his own four feet, before setting him down and proceeding as usual. Now my finish game isn't the strongest, and I had some drips after a few coats from applying the finish a little too heavily. Lighter coats are always better. So after my third coat had properly dried, I performed a good hand sanding with 220 grit sandpaper, making sure to level out any drips from the polyurethane. 
After dusting it off on the air compressor again, I applied a fourth and final coat to each reindeer before they were finally done. And here they are, in all their fancy turntable slow-mo glory. I'm super happy with how these turned out, and I'll probably make a few every year from here on out to get myself in the holiday spirit. I think they would also make a great gift. Hank and Spencer will definitely be getting one for letting me harass their mental art in order to create my template. So there you go. I really hope you like these. And I just gotta say, even though I poked fun at his reindeer in my intro, I do want to thank Matthias Wendell for ultimately inspiring this project. Be sure to check out his video too if you want a more succinct overview of the cutting process. He doesn't forget to cut out the reindeer's legs. Oh, and I mentioned that I currently only have 6 inches of resaw capacity on my bandsaw, but there is a riser block that I can get to increase that to 12 inches, which I'll probably do so I can make even larger reindeer for our seasonal collection. But enough asides, go make one of these bandsaw reindeer for yourself, family, or friends, and if you post a photo on social, be sure to tag me. I'd love to see these out in the wild. Finally, if you enjoyed this little Christmas project, I sure would appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you want to stay tuned for future projects like this, go ahead and subscribe while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a safe, happy, and healthy holiday season, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!